Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? How's everything? I am fine. Great. Okay. Happy to hear that. Let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you. Here we go. Okay. Everybody take a look. Um, and now I'm going to uh, call your names from the attendance list. Okay, we don't have many people, only six people are connected, I believe. All right, so, um, uh, well, maybe I should call attendance a bit later today because it's, I only have six people. So I guess it's going to be kind of like a waste of time. I'm going to wait a little bit longer, okay? Just waiting a little bit longer until uh, more people get connected to call attendance, but we're going to start the class right now, okay? So I'll call attendance like in five minutes or so. Anyway, this is uh, Ingres Avanzado, Modelo Uno. This is Advanced English One, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. So everybody, welcome. Welcome one more time to this class. Um, today, this is session number eight, and today is September the 7th of 2023 or 2023, whichever you prefer, okay, is fine. You can say 2023 or 2023, it's fine. So let's get, let's get started. Um, this is uh, here. So what are we going to do? Okay, first, we're going to have an exercise to review the content from yesterday. And that what, what was that content? We were studying models of uh, certainty and opinion about the past. So what we're going to do here is you need to circle, or in your case, choose, okay, the correct answer to complete the sentence. So there's number one, for example. It goes, Kimi didn't come to the party last night. I wonder why. Okay, now look at what the person says, I wonder why. When you say, I wonder why, okay, you're not really sure about what happened. So um, the person says, I'm not sure, okay? I need a volunteer to choose. The, the options are, are, she could have been sick, I guess, or she should have been sick, I guess. So who wants to try, who wants to participate? Gabriel, okay, Gabriel. I'm not sure she could have been sick, I guess. She could have been sick, I guess. And yeah, that's correct, okay? So I'm not sure she could have been sick, I guess. Okay, very good, very, very good. Now, um, number two, you have Ron said he saw a UFO last night. What is a UFO, by the way? Do you know? What is a UFO? I don't know. I don't know, teacher. Okay. You don't know. <laughs> no problem. This is, uh, you know, when you see something in the sky and you don't know what it is, okay, and apparently there is no explanation, people say it is a UFO. In Spanish, they call it OVNI, okay, Objeto Volador No Identificado. In English, they call it UFO, which stands for Unidentified flying object. Okay, that's a UFO, an unidentified flying object. Just like Spanish, when you say OVNI, Objeto Volador No Identificado, in English it's UFO, unidentified flying object. Okay? He's starting to say, teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's an unidentified flying object. So Ron said he saw a UFO last night. He said, that's ridiculous. Saul. Uh, the answer could be, uh, he must have been dreaming. That's ridiculous. He must have been dreaming. Yeah, that's right. He must have been dreaming. You are sure about that. That's why you say he must have been dreaming. Thank you, Saul. That is correct. Very good. Number three. I got a terrible cramp in my leg while I was jogging ye jogging yesterday. Do you know what cramps are? When your muscles contract like this, and it's very painful. You go like, oh man, okay, that's a cramp. 
Okay, it can, it can also happen when you're stretching your legs, for example, you're stretching and then, oh man, you feel something in your muscles. They contract all of a sudden like this, and it can be very painful. That's a cramp, a muscle cramp. So um, I got a terrible cramp in my leg while I was jogging yesterday. Who wants to try this one? If you know, please raise your hand. What do you have? If you know the answer, you may raise your hand. Nobody knows? Who wants to try? Come on, come on. You have, um, okay, Elizabeth. I try. Okay. Uh, um, you may have done your stretch properly first. So you have, I got a terrible cramp in my leg while I was jogging yesterday. And the answer is, hmm, you may have done your stretches properly. Okay. So is that the right uh, expression? What do you think, um, Elizabeth? Uh -huh. I think it, a stretch properly is um, a, like uh, first, how can I say it? A calentar antes. Ah, that's yeah. that's that's to warm up. Okay. No, but the stretches is is when you do this, right? When you stretch. Mm. You, you stretch, you do this kind of stuff, okay? Okay, then you're stretching, okay? So you must not have done your stretches properly first, or you may have done your stretches properly first. Properly means well, well done. Okay, that's the meaning of properly. So what do you think? Is it you must not have or you may have? Which one is it? Any ideas? Maybe uh, uh, Elizabeth? No, I don't know if you want to. No, not anymore. No problem, no problem. Okay, uh, Madeline? I will try. So, okay. Um, uh, I got a terrible cramp in my leg while I was go jogging yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, um, you may have done your stretch properly first. You may have done your stretches properly first. Mm, not exactly. <laughs> you must not have. <laughs> you, must not, you must not have. Okay, that's the one. You must not have done your stretches properly first. Lisa. Que no de haber hecho el estiramiento correctamente primero, right? You must not have done your stretches properly first. That's why you got the cramp. Okay. All right, but everybody, thank you for participating. What about number four? I had to ask Natalie twice to turn down the TV. Saul. It could be um, she might not have heard you the first time. She might not have heard you the first time. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Saul. Okay, number five. They said the meeting was at 7.30 but it had already started when I got there. So what is it? Need more water. <laughs> when you're teaching, you need to drink water. Otherwise you lose your voice. Anyway, so... Um, What about this one? They told me seven. You can't have been told the wrong time or you must have been told the wrong time. Which one is it? What do you think?
No ideas here? I can't believe it. No, nothing? Okay, then. Because I have to give the answer. Uh, you must have been told the wrong time. Okay, that's the one. Again, they said the meeting was at 7.30, but it had already started when I got there. So they told me 7. You must have been told the wrong time. Then they were dicho la incorrecta. Number six. Marnie wasn't at work yesterday. Was she sick? Who wants to try this one? Saul? Oh, wait a second. So this is the third time you participate. We have to give an opportunity to more people. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's see what Byron has to say about it. Okay. Well, she could, she must have been too sick. I saw her at the park. She must have been too sick. I saw her at the park. But if you saw her at the park, how is that possible? Uh, it, she couldn't have. Uh -huh. She couldn't have been too sick. I saw her at the park. So when you say she couldn't have been too sick, that means, no, it was not possible, okay? Because I saw her at the park. Okay, nice. What about, thank you, Byron. What about number seven? I'm worried about my little brother. He gained 10 kilos last year. Okay, Saul, all right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, if you'll insist. Okay. He shouldn't have been eating all that junk food. He shouldn't have been eating all that junk food. That's correct. Thank you, Saul. Okay. And number eight. Sorry I'm late. We were playing baseball and I didn't notice the time. So what does the other person say? Hmm. About the last one. Gabriel. I guess it's, uh, you couldn't have been doing that. It's been dark for an hour. You couldn't have been doing that. It's been dark for an hour. Okay. That is correct. I feel the breeze like it's about to rain or something. Anyway, window is open right behind me. Okay, uh, now that we have completed this exercise, I'm going to call your names from the attendance list. Okay, so when you hear it, please let me know. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia. Present. Okay. Welcome, Ana Cecilia. Yes, Byron. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Welcome, Byron. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Present, teacher. Welcome, Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Damari Ismerari Marroquín Rivas. Present, teacher. Welcome, uh, Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. I see her on the list. Okay, uh, Elisa Arely López Campos. Elisa Arely Lopez Campos. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejia Torres. Present teacher. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Okay, welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. 
present. Welcome. Uh, Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespin. Present, teacher. Welcome. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. I'm here, teacher. Welcome. Saúl Arnulfo Menjibar Crespin. Present. Welcome. Uh, Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Okay, just calling some names again in case some of you uh, join the class. Elisa Arely Lopez Campos. Elisa Arely. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Salas. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Uh, Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Calderón de Aparicio. Okay. Calling those names again later. We have two chat entries. Madeline says, good evening. President Carlos Dominguez also says, good evening. Okay. Attendance taken, both of you. Thank you very much. All right, let's continue. Okay, there is another exercise right here, which is circle the phrase. I don't know if we have time Chair. for this because, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, Carlos? Teacher, uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, can, you, can you hear me in the middle right some platform? Um, ah, we're going to do that today. Don't worry. Ah, the okay. the class. Mm -hmm. Don't sorry. worry. Okay. I, got, I got you covered. Okay. Uh, Don't okay. worry about that. I, I believe we're probably not going to do this exercise because it's a bit, I mean, we probably won't have time. So we're going to skip it. Okay. This, this, this is an extra exercise anyway. So we really don't need to go um, over it. Yeah, I guess we're going to skip it because of the time. All right. Let's go over this. Okay. So discussion, what's the explanation? Okay. This is part of the material. Read these headlines about strange events. How would you explain them? Now, there are some strange events around the world that basically have no explanation. Nobody knows why they happen. They're a mystery, okay? So um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The first one is strange patterns found in wheat crops. Have you seen these before? Not in El Salvador, of course, but maybe you have seen them in, in the news, probably in other countries, mostly in the United States, also in England. Um, or you have seen them in movies, okay? Like there's a movie with Mel Gibson. Another one is Mysterious Light Seen Over Arizona in Phoenix, okay? That's another one, Mysterious Lights Seen Over Arizona. And Loch Ness Monster Found, okay? Have you heard about the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland? Okay, this is like a supposedly a prehistoric monster that some people say lives there. So uh, those are some... Um, you can say unsolved mysteries around the world. Take a good look at this. Group work, discuss your explanations, okay? You can use, uh, probably because of time, we're not going to discuss it, but at least I want you to take a look at the useful expressions that we can use in these cases. When you are discussing events, okay, or you're discussing any topic in general, you can use expressions for disagreeing, okay? Because that can happen. You can say, for example, I don't know, okay? When a person says something and you don't agree with that comment, you don't agree with that person, right? You can say, I don't know. And then you say your point of view. Imagine that, for example, when they're discussing the crop circles, somebody says, no, those are, they are made by aliens because aliens come and they do these crop circles. It's a navigation system that they have, et cetera, et cetera. It's a theory, of course, and you have to respect the opinion of the other person. But if you don't agree, okay, you can say, I don't know, okay, and then you can start, you know, uh, saying your own opinion. You can also say, I'm not so sure, okay, that's a very respectful way to say that you don't agree with the other person, okay, that you have a different opinion. You can also say, well, maybe, but, okay, and then you say your opinion again. Also, you can say, I know what you mean, but, okay, that's another one. 
So you can use all of these expressions to respectfully disagree with the other person. Always remember that when you don't agree with someone, okay, you have the right to say it, but you have to show respect, okay, because everybody has the right to have their own opinion. You should never say like, no, that's stupid. No, 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 no. Never say that because that will be disrespectful to the other person. So those are some useful expressions right here. Do you have any questions about the expressions before we continue? Yes, continue, any? teacher. Okay, we will just continue. Okay. All right, then. Uh, lesson objective. You have, in this session, participants will be able to learn and practice using verbs to express degrees of certainty. That's uh, lesson objective 2.8, okay? So we're going to study today. So verbs of belief, what are we going to do? Put these verbs of belief in the columns. Discuss your answers with a partner, okay? So what is this? You have to put them in the right column depending on the meaning. You have the verbs assume, be positive, bet, figure, have a hunch, suppose, be certain, be sure, doubt, guess, know for a fact, and suspect. So what do you have to do? You need to classify all of these verbs into the right categories. And the categories are certain, Certain is when you are sure about something, you know, like, yes, absolutely. This is the way it is. This is when you're certain about something. And then not certain when you, well, maybe, maybe not. Okay. You say, maybe that's the way, maybe that's not the way. So um, I, I'm going to give you three minutes. Okay. I'm going to give you three minutes so that you individually classify all of these verbs, assume, be positive, bad figure, have a hunch, suppose, be certain, be sure, doubt, guess, know for a fact, and suspect into the right categories. The right categories are certain and not certain. We're going to have the first two, okay? We're going to do it together as an example. You have assume. What do you think? Is it certain or not certain? Assume will be not certain, okay? When you assume something, it's like you understand, maybe that's the right way, but you are not sure. You assume only. Then you have be positive. Oh, sorry, be certain. That's the second one. Be certain. Be certain is quite obviously in the in the first category certain, right? So that's what I want you to do. Just classify the verbs. I'm going to give you three minutes for you to do so, starting right now. Let's begin. Three minutes, and then we're going to check answers.
Okay, time's up. So uh, the first one is assume, right? That's not certain. Be certain is in certain, obviously. What about the next one? Be positive. Who knows the answer? Please raise your hand. The next one is be positive. Okay, uh, Biden. I think is certain. Certain. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. It's be positive. Is oh, okay. be, yeah, <laughs> when you're certain about something. Yeah, you can say I am positive. That's the case. Or I'm positive. That's the situation. That means you're sure about that. You're certain about it. Thank you, Byron. Okay. Um, for the next one, uh, Ana Cecilia, uh, be sure. Certain. Certain. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's easy. Okay, uh, for the next one. Thank you, Ana Cecilia. Um, bet. Elizabeth. Certain. Certain. Well, actually, it goes in the other one. Not certain. Okay, it goes in not certain. When you say, I bet, you are saying that you think there is a high uh, probability, okay, but you cannot be completely sure. You say, I bet, okay? But yeah, it's it's very close actually, Elizabeth, but thank you very much. So bet, what about the next one? Doubt, what about doubt? Who can tell us? How about doubt? Um, okay, Elizabeth wants to participate again and then Gabriel. Okay, Elizabeth. No certain, not, not certain. Not, not certain. certain. Yeah, that's right. Not certain. Speaking of that, okay, there's a pronunciation of the word, okay, uh, similar to the word debt that we studied yesterday. If you remember, the B is silent. You don't pronounce it. The same thing happens here. The B is also silent, so you don't pronounce it. You don't say doubt. That will be incorrect. You have to say doubt only. Doubt. Okay. Just remember, this B right here is, is, is silent. This one is also silent, okay? Doubt, that, okay? Those are the words. So doubt is in not certain. Thank you. Gabriel, the next one, please. Figure. I guess it's certain. Certain. Actually, <laughs> it is not certain. When you figure something, it's like you imagine that's the case, but you are not completely sure, okay? So figure is not certain. What about guess? Who knows? What about guess? Rufino? Not, not certain. Not certain. Okay, that's correct. Okay, guess is in the not certain category. Of course. Thank you, Rufino. What about the next one? Have a hunch. What about this one? Gabriela? Not certain. Not certain. Yeah, that's right. Have a hunch. This is like when you have a feeling. You, know, mm, you think that's the case, but you cannot really explain why. Okay, so it's just you're guessing when you have a hunch. Okay, so um, the next one uh, that was for somebody was raising their hand. Um, Elizabeth, okay, no for a fact How about this one. <laughs> No, for a fact, it's certain. Certain, yeah, absolutely. When you know something for a fact, that means that you know the official information. So you are certain about it, okay? Mm. Okay, yeah, you, you know something for a fact. I'm sorry, I got surprised because of something that I saw through the window. <laughs> I apologize about that. So yeah, when you know something for a fact, you have the, the right and uh, official information about something. So you can be sure about it. The next one, okay, suppose about this one. Raise your hand if you know. Carlos. I think so certain. Uh, certain. Yes. Actually, it's not certain. Okay. When oh, okay. You not certain. Suppose okay. something is, you, you guess, you think, you imagine, mm -hmm. but you can't be sure. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Okay. And the last one, suspect about this one. If you know, if you want to try, just raise your hand. Give it a try. About suspect. Ana Cecilia. Not certain. 
not certain. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. So you have all those expressions to talk about. Uh, those are the verbs of belief. Okay, again, in the certain category, you have be certain, be positive, be sure, know for a fact, and all that. In the not certain category, you have assume, bet, doubt, figure, guess, have a hunch, suppose, and suspect. Madeline, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. What mm -hmm. does it mean bet and hunch? Okay. T to have a hunch is an expression. Okay. To have a hunch means like, um, this is similar to Spanish when you say tener una corazonada. Okay. In other words, you cannot really say why you know something or why you believe something, but you have a feeling that you have the right answer. Okay. That's the thing. So uh, that's the first one. The other one is when you say, I bet, this is, this is like um, when you want to uh, say, apuesto que, okay? This is a very high degree of certainty, but you cannot be 100% sure about it. It's like probably 90% sure, but not 100%. That's why it is in the not certain category when you say, I bet. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary here? Any other questions? No more questions? No, teacher. Okay. All right, so if that's the case, um, let us continue. Okay. Um, there's a listening exercise we have to solve. This is uh, exercise 2.10 from the platform. So what do we have here? Still unsolved mysteries. Um, listen to our radio program about a famous claim of alien abduction. What is an alien abduction? When the aliens take you <laughs> into their mothership and they do experiments with you and they, they return you. Okay. Some people say this happens. Some other people say this is not true. Who knows? Okay. But the thing is, again, listen to a radio program about famous, uh, a famous claim of alien abduction in Canada. Okay. What I want you to do right here is this. Uh, check the facts or claims that the people mention. Which ones support the Hill story and which ones don't? So I want you to listen and I want you to tell me which ones uh, are the claims that people mentioned. The first one is the Hills saw an object flying beside their car. Two, Betty saw creatures looking at them from the object. Uh, number three, the creatures spoke to the Hills in a strange language. Number four, Betty found pink powder on her dress the next day. Number five, the Air Force agreed that Betty saw a UFO. Number six, the doctors doubted the Hill story. Number seven, the aliens looked just like creatures from a TV show. And number eight, the trip took seven hours instead of four. Okay, I'm going to play the track for you. I want you to listen and I want you to identify, you know, the claims that the people mention. Okay. This is basically the same exercise that you have in the platform 2.10. So please listen, and then you tell me the answers. All right, here we go. Unit two, lesson B, page 16. Can you hear that, by the way? Yes, yeah. Yeah, teacher, I can right. hear. Okay, let's listen. Five, still unsolved mysteries. B. Listen to a radio program about a famous claim of alien abduction in Canada. What did the Hills say happened to them? Good evening, listeners, and welcome to Still Unsolved Mysteries. Tonight, we're going to talk about the strange case of Betty and Barney Hill. They were convinced that one night in 1961, they were abducted by aliens. Could this really have happened? Martha Stevens is here to talk about it. Martha, what's the story? Hi, David. Well, one night, 
While the Hills were driving home from a vacation in Montreal, they saw a bright point of light in the sky. Barney assumed it must be a plane or maybe a satellite, but Betty thought it could be a UFO. There were no other cars on the road, so Barney drove slowly so they could watch it. The object seemed to be flying beside them. Barney began to agree that it couldn't be a plane, so he stopped the car. And Betty said she saw about 10 creatures looking at them through windows in the object. And then what happened? As they drove quickly away, they suddenly felt tired, and their bodies felt strange. Their next memory was driving on the highway again. They arrived at their home early the next morning. They said things were still strange. How were they strange? Well, they couldn't remember the drive home clearly. Betty found pink powder and stains on her dress. She had no idea where they might have come from. Did they contact anyone? Betty wrote a letter to the Air Force about their strange experience and about the terrible dreams she was having. The Air Force said Betty must have been having the dreams because she thought she saw a UFO. They said she couldn't have seen aliens. Betty and Barney were interviewed and hypnotized many times by doctors. They told stories about having medical tests on the spaceship. What did the doctors think? They doubted the story. They said dreams like this can be triggered by science fiction TV shows. Barney's description of the creatures matched creatures from a TV show. Doctors figured the Hills must have seen the show. Betty said Barney couldn't have seen the show because he worked in the evenings when it was on TV. Hmm. I suspect the doctors were right. That must be the real explanation. Well, maybe. There's one more thing. Doctors asked the Hills what time they left Montreal and what time they got home. The trip should have taken four hours. The Hills were amazed to realize it had taken them seven hours. What happened to the missing three hours? Good question, Martha. I guess that's why it's still an unsolved mystery. Okay. Let's check. So, um, what are the facts that the people mentioned? Who knows the answer? Please raise your hand. Okay, Gabriel. Uh, it's uh, the hills saw an object flying beside their car. The hills saw an object flying beside their car. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, the next one. Thank you, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. What else? Who, who wants to participate? Let's do this. We still have to uh, go through the, the midterm, okay? So, can anyone else help us do this exercise, please? Gabriela. Betty found pink powder on her dress the next day. Betty found pink powder on her dress the next day. That is correct. But before that one, there's another one. But it's true. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Betty, Betty wow. saw creatures looking at them from the object. That's right. Betty saw creatures looking at them from the object, and Betty found pink powder on her dress the next day. Thank you very much, Gabriela. Um, what else? Who wants to try? Who wants to participate? Biden. The Air Force agreed that Betty saw a UFO. The Air Force agreed that Betty saw a UFO. You sure about that? Yes. Okay. Actually, that's not one. <laughs> okay, that's that's not exactly mentioned. Okay. Instead, we have this one. The doctors doubted the Hill story. Okay. That's the one. The doctors doubted the Hill story. Okay. So that's that's the one that's next. But thank you, Byron. What about uh, the next one? I mean, are there any more that you want to mention? If that's the case, you can raise your hand. Carlos and then Madeline. 
The aliens look just like creatures from a TV show. The aliens look just like creatures from a TV show. Yeah, that's right. Creatures. Yes. Thank you, Carlos. And uh, Madeline, I believe, was the next one. Um, any other? Um, the trip took seven hours instead of four. The trip took seven hours instead of four. That is correct. Very good. Okay. And then there's this other thing, but that's a listening exercise that you have in the platform 2.10. Okay. Um, it, those are the answers. Okay. So if you haven't done the exercise, it's right there. Now you have the answers. So um, also, I want you to do this because okay, we don't have time right now. Okay. We're running out of time and we still need to go through the midterm. And the midterm is kind of long. Um, I want you to do this in your house. Okay. Which is Amnesia Spoils new, Newlyweds Bliss. Okay, it's a true and false exercise, just three items, just check if they're true and false. So um, it's time for us to go through the, or, or to do the midterm. So what are we going to do? I want you to take a good look at this uh, midterm. Um, we're gonna do it. Okay, listening part, okay, listenings. Brian wanted to go to the party, true or false. Megan met a shy girl at the party, true or false. Carla knows a lot of people that Megan's friend knows, true or false. Carla works in the office and Ryan will join his friend and Carla for lunch. I want you to listen and then tell me if the answers are true or false according to that. Listen to a conversation between two friends, Ryan and Megan. Then check true or false. False. Hi, Megan. Hey, Ryan. Were you at that huge party last weekend? You mean the one that took up the whole city block? Yeah, I can't believe how many people were there. I know. I didn't want to go, but my friend Doug dragged me along. I didn't see you there. I had a great time, and we met a really cool girl there. My sister and I went to the Natural History Museum with her on Wednesday. What's she like? Well, her name's Carla, and I thought she was pretty shy and reserved at first. But she's not? Nope. Once I started talking to her, I realized she wasn't shy at all. Just sorry. Um, always remember to uh, keep your microphones off. Okay. Uh, when 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 you're not participating. Okay. Here we go. Calm and cool. It just goes to show you that people aren't always what they seem like at first. No kidding. Oh, and Carla and I discovered we have a lot of friends in common. Really. I'm surprised you haven't met before. Yeah, me too. So what does she do? She works at home. She runs a business out of her living room. Doing what? She teaches middle school and high school kids how to save money for college. Carla sounds like a strong and independent woman. Yeah, she definitely is. Cool. Hey, we're going for lunch tomorrow afternoon. Do you want to come? Sure, I'd love to meet her. Great. Meet us at that Thai restaurant. You know, the... Okay. So what about number one? Ryan, because of the time, um, it's, it's 8.44 right now. So uh, we don't have much time. You don't need to raise your hand to participate. If you want to say something, you can just say it. Okay. So number one, Ryan wanted to go to the party. True or false? False. False. Okay. Megan met a shy girl at the party. Uh huh. False. Okay, false also. Okay, all right. But uh, try to participate, people, not just one person. <laughs> okay, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, number three, Carla knows a lot of people that Megan's friends, uh, friend knows. True or false? You can participate. No need to raise true. your hand right now. Okay, true. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carla works in an office. True or false? Yes. Okay, uh, Carlos? False. It's false. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. And number five, Ryan will join his friend and Carla for lunch. True or false? What do you think? Sorry? True. 
True. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Those are the, the, the answers. Listening part two. Okay. Uh, Mike have plans to meet Kelly after class or at the class. Number two, Anna thinks Kelly got sick or Anna doesn't think Kelly got sick. Number three, Anna thinks Professor Atkins knew Kelly missed the exam or Professor Atkins didn't know Kelly missed the exam. And number four, Professor Atkins usually allows makeup test or doesn't allow makeup test. I'm going to play the track, listen, and then you can tell me the answers. Recuerden que ahorita por el tiempo no es necesario levantar la mano, si no, nunca terminamos. <laughs> si saben las respuestas, pueden solo, simplemente decirla. Here we go. Passages, third edition, level one, unit two quiz, part A. Listen to a conversation between two classmates, Mike and Anna. Then check the correct answers. Anna, what did you think of the English final? I don't know, Mike. I thought it was pretty hard. Yeah, I thought so too. But I feel pretty good about it. Hey, do you know what happened to Kelly? She didn't show up for the exam. I don't know. But we were supposed to meet right after class to talk about our final project. Do you think she's sick? Hmm. I just talked to her last night and she seemed okay. I doubt she got sick so quickly. Well, I should have said something to Professor Atkins. I wonder if she noticed that Kelly wasn't there. Probably not. There are 55 people in our class. But Kelly never misses class. Do you think Professor Atkins will let her take a makeup exam? Yeah, she let me take a makeup exam once. I suspect she'll do the same for Kelly. I hope so. Let's call Kelly now and see if she's okay. Okay, number one. Mike had plans to meet Kelly after class or at the class? After class. After class. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Number two. Anna thinks Kelly got sick or doesn't think Kelly got sick? Doesn't think, doesn't think Kelly got sick. Doesn't think Kelly got sense. sick. Okay, good. Number three. Anna thinks Professor Atkins knew Kelly missed the exam or didn't know Kelly missed the exam. Didn't know Kelly missed the exam. Okay. Didn't know Kelly missed the exam. Okay, yeah, that's right. And number four. Professor Atkins usually allows makeup tests or doesn't allow makeup tests. Allows makeup tests. Allows makeup tests. That's right. Okay, those are the answers to listening part two. Now, choose the words, okay? Instructions, type the verb that best completes each sentence. Use infinitive or gerund, okay? Do not need to use capital letters or periods. You do not need to, to use capital letters or periods. So, Maria avoids, and the verb is get. What is the correct form? What does she avoid? Getting. Getting, okay. Maria getting. avoids getting in other people's problems. Okay, number two. David insists on, what is the word? Making. Making, yeah. David insists on making a big deal out of his birthday every year. Okay, number three. I don't care for cloths, but I enjoy, what's the word? Going. 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 Okay, yeah. To the movie late on Saturdays. Number four. Uh, Jenna hates. To listen. To listen. To listen. But in the platform, the right answer is to listen. In the platform. But you can also say listening in real life. Okay. If you type in listening in the platform, it will probably take it as wrong. Okay. So go for it to listen, okay? But in reality, any I mean, either is fine. Number five, uh, Kevin has a job, but he still likes, what is it? He still likes? Volunteering. 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 You can also say to volunteer is possible uh, in his free time. And number six, I don't like loud music, but I don't mind Sing. Seeing a live band occasionally. Okay, those are the answers to this exercise. Exercise B, choose the word part one. Let's go with part two. Okay, 
uh, type in the uh, type in only the models that best complete each sentence. Choose between should, could, must, might, negative, affirmative. Do not need to use capital letters or periods. You do not need to use capital letters or periods. So number one, Ying was late. She. I don't like this exercise because it's there are many possible answers to be honest. Okay, so must. she must, she must uh, use must for this one because that's the one that take us correct. So she must have been stuck in traffic. Okay, thank you. What about number two? Jack didn't call me back. He might. He might have been busy. Okay, that is correct. Very good. Number three, I didn't do well on the exam. I could shouldn't. Shouldn't. I shouldn't have gone out the night before. Make sure that when you are typing in the answer, you are using the right uh, the right characters. When you say, for example, should, shouldn't, okay, should be an apostrophe, right? Always an apostrophe. I'm telling you this because sometimes people use uh, accents like this one, okay? It looks like an apostrophe, but it is not. Okay, this is not an apostrophe. And if you use that in the platform, it will be taken as incorrect. So you have to be careful not to use it. Instead, use the right symbol, the right character. And that is an apostrophe. That's the one. Okay, should, by the way, shouldn't. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Typo from my part. It's shouldn't with an N. So, uh, but again, the idea is don't use an accent, okay? Because that would not be correct. Use an apostrophe. That's the one. So, uh, what about number four? That loud noise. Could. That loud noise could have been a, a tree falling. Okay, very good. Number five, instead of chatting online, I. I should. I should have been cleaning my apartment. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Number six, that intersection is dangerous. Drivers. Mustn't. Mustn't or must? Must. Must, right? Okay, drivers must be more careful. Okay, because the intersection is dangerous. So drivers must be more, more, more uh, careful. Okay. Good, that's part two. Now let's go with part C, type the words. Okay, instructions, read the following sentences. Choose from the following verbs to complete the sentences. You have aggravate, cause, deal with, identify, identifies, should be identifies actually, ignore and run into. Just type the, the verb. Uh, you do not need to use capital letters or periods. So the first one is Kara. What is that? Ignores. Ignores, okay, Kara ignores her problems. She thinks that other people will do something about him. Good. Number two, Bao Wei isn't sure what's wrong with his bike when he identifies. When he identifies the problem, he will fix it. Yeah, that's right. Number three, Mia's life always runs smoothly. It seems like she never... Mm hmm like she never runs into runs into yeah that's right unexpected problems number four marco is a great boss i like the way he come on people let's participate i have more than one student mm -hmm. more than two students uh-huh what is it what about you mean deals with okay i like the way he deals with problems that come up with that he come up he comes up with okay or maybe that come up that with is not necessary right there problems that come up number five don't ask him to come with us she what's the right word Cuss. she causes Cuss. she causes problems wherever she goes thank you and number six, you shouldn't scratch an insect bite. It only Great. aggravates Great. a problem. Okay, it only aggravates a problem. Yeah, that's right. 
Now, uh, if you notice, all of them are like third person singular form. Okay, so if you're not using the third person singular form, you will get them as wrong. So make sure you add that S or ES, okay? Or IES in some cases. All right, so what's next? Uh, exercise C, part two, okay? This is uh, some really long exercises. We only have five minutes, so let's, let's hurry. And I apologize that uh, everything looks so small. Okay, so number one, I just saw Kara at the cafe, so I know for a fact or I doubt she's in town. What is it? No. I doubt she's in town, but you just saw her at the cafe, so. No for a fact. You know no for, for a fact. A fact. Uh -huh. You know for a fact that she's in town. Yeah, that's right. Second one, Joe's plane landed two hours ago, so I am certain or not sure why he hasn't gotten home yet. How about this one? Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. That's correct. Sure. Okay. Not Number sure. three. It sounded noisy when Vera called. When Vera called, so I suspect or I'm positive she is out shopping. Suspect. I suspect. suspect. That's right, because it could be some other situation. Yeah. Number four. Junko said she checked her email, so I assume or I doubt. I doubt, says Dauby, I don't know why, but it's doubt. Uh, she has internet access. Assume. I assume. assume. I assume, of course. Okay. Number five. I am positive, or I figure, I'll see Emma today since she's in my English class. What is it? I am, positive. I, am I am positive. positive. I am positive, which is like, I'm sure. Correct. And the last one, Jerry loves football. I doubt or I have a hunch he'll be at the game today. What do you think? I have a hunch. I have a hunch, okay? I have a hunch. Una corazonada, right? I have a hunch he'll be at the game today. Correct. Readings. Okay, now you have the readings, reading parts. Okay. Um, by the way, just let me check something here very quickly. Here we go. Um, Readings, you have to read the sentences, choose from the following words that best describe each person, type them in lower lowercase letters, periods are not needed. You have friendly and outgoing, strong and independent. Okay, by the way, there is a typo here, should not be independent with an A, it's independent with an E, okay? However, that's the answer that, that, that will be allowed as correct in the platform. So you will have to do it with the typo. Uh, neat and tidy, wild and crazy. Number one, Judy loves going to clubs and staying out late. She is? Madeline? Teacher, uh, only chose a observation. Uh, mm -hmm. I I wrote, um, how do you say? I, don't I wrote, remember. I wrote, or in this I, case, I typed in. Uh, I typed in independent at platform and it was wrong uh, when i type independent it's correct in that case with an a with a yeah uh-huh uh -huh. that's what i was explaining there is a typo here there's a mistake okay uh the word is independent with an e okay not with an a but, but... It's, it's wrong if you mm -hmm. type in the platform uh huh. Exactly. That's why I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, you keep in mind that the word is written with an E, but in the platform, the, the answer was registered with an A. So if you want to get it correct, you will have to make the mistake also. Yeah. But you know, keep keep it in mind, right? That that it's actually with an E. Okay. So okay. number one, Judy loves going to clubs and staying out late. She is friendly and outgoing. Friendly and outgoing. Uh, probably not. 
Wild and crazy. Wild and crazy. Okay. Wild and crazy. Number two, Tom always introduces himself to new students and invites them for coffee. He is... What is he? Friendly and outgoing. Friendly and outgoing. Okay, Friendly correct. And outgoing. Number three, Mia puts her clothes and books away every night before bed. She is... Neat and tidy. Neat and tidy. Okay, that's correct. And the last one, Ellie is never afraid to make decisions without asking others what they think. She is... Strong and independent. independent. Strong and independent. Now, what answer you have to type in? You have to type it in with an A. It's not correct, but that's the answer registered in the platform. So you have no option. But you have to know that the real, I mean, the, the right uh, spelling is with an E, independent with an E. Okay, so don't get confused. All right. But if you want to have it right in quotation marks, okay, you have to do it with an A. Okay. Just remember, it's not correct like that. And finally, there's the reading part. It's nine already. Okay, so... Uh, I assume you have already read this, okay? So I'm just going to go directly to the questions because I assume you have done it already. So um, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner was at Jessica's uh, great uncle Pete's or great aunt Susie's house? Great aunt Susie's. Great aunt Susie's, okay. Number two, Susie or everyone did the cooking? Everyone. Everyone did the cooking. Everyone. Number three, Jessica's brother-in-law made Apple cranberry pie or broccoli and chestnuts? Broccoli and chestnuts. Broccoli and chestnuts. Broccoli and chestnuts. Apple uh, cranberry pie. Chestnut. Should be apple apple cranberry, apple cranberry pie. That's 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 the one. Apple Bridget. cranberry. Okay, number four. Jessica uh, liked or didn't like the new recipe she tried? Didn't like. Didn't like. Okay, according like. to the answer, the didn't broccoli like. the broccoli made everyone sick or made everyone laugh. Love. Made everyone laugh. Love. That's that's the official answer. And then the reading is okay. The second part, let's hurry because we have to finish this. Akemi was at the party. True or false? True. <laughs> True. Mindy True. went to the party after the exam. True or false? False. False. Okay, that's the answer false. we got. Helen's cell phone battery died. True or false? True, I guess. True, you guess. True. Okay, true. False. False. Okay, there false. you go. Okay, so it's 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 false. What about this one? Mario turned off his cell phone battery, his cell phone, sorry, before the party. False. False, according false. to story. False. And Helen didn't call to make sure Akemi had a ride. True or false? True. This one is true. True. So those are the answers that you should have in the platform. If you haven't completed the test, the midterm test, okay, please do so. Okay, we're about to finish. Just let me call uh, attendance one more time before we finish this and and, and then we're gonna be done. Elisa Arely Lopez Campos. Is Elisa Arely here with us tonight? Elisa Arely Lopez Campos, no? Um, Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas? Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas, no? Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Erika Maricela Morales Cordero. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Is Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez here? No. Nope. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Not here. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. And I'm sorry that we extended the class a little bit too long, but we had to complete this. Um, make sure you have completed all the exercises in the platform up to the midterm, okay? All of them, section number one, section number two, and midterm must be completed by now. No class tomorrow, remember, because it's Friday. So I'll see you Monday. Thank you very much and enjoy okay, your weekend. Teacher. Thank Take you. Care. Okay, see you, see you Monday, bye-bye. Have Take a nice care. weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.